Everybody good? It has been. I can't even tell you the last time. What about y'all? Well, we had football media days with the university. Really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. All right. Hey guys, before we get uh, going and open it up to questions, uh, just a few quick notes. So we're going to play Langston here on Saturday. That tips off at 2. Uh, please let everybody know that's free for everybody to attend. Um, so just get that out that it's free for fans to attend. Langston is coached by Elaine Powell, who played here in the 1990s. Uh, she had a WNBA career, so we're excited to have her back in uh, the PMAC. And then we'll also have another exhibition game next Thursday at 6 p.m against Loyola, that will also be free, and then we kick off our season on the 9th against Nichols at 11 a.m. for the field trip game. So uh, open it up for questions. We're going to have the players here for about the first 10 minutes. We'll let them go get ready for practice, and you guys are uh, invited to spend the first 20 minutes of practice with us. Y'all know who these guys are? Tell them, Grant. Uh, we got Anna Gusters here, Jalen Cherry on the left. How y'all doing? And uh, wait for Alyssa to get a mic. Jalen, uh, does this feel like uh, uh, the first normal season you're going to get started on in like three years? Um, it's, I feel right now it's going to be a very confident season for me. Um, coach has instilled the confidence in me to shoot the ball more and you know not take away from my offensive ability, knowing that I can play defense on the other side. So, yes, sir. Hannah, just uh, tell us about your transition uh, it, you know, from coming from Baylor, your decision to come here. And uh, is Coach the same, or she mellowed a lot since uh, since y'all were here? <laughs> <laughs> um, she's definitely the same. She's gonna always be the same. <laughs> tell them about you coming. Um, I would say I knew coming here. This was the only coach that was gonna bring me to the highest potential possible. Um, just seeing what she's done with Lauren Cox, Kalani Brown, and Alyssa Smith, Queen Egbo. I knew she was the only one as a you know post coach who could take me to the highest potential I could possibly go as a player. Jalen, let me rephrase my question. Um, because of the, the COVID restrictions y'all been under and, and the way the season ended two years ago, uh, the normalcy, uh, oh, you feel yeah, like yeah. you're getting ready to have the first real season yeah, in Yeah, more of the fans, the excitement. Um, I'm actually very excited about uh, the fans coming, you know, because we really haven't had a big crowd here in a while. So it's going to be really exciting to, you know, see everybody, see everybody's faces and, you know, hear the loud cheers. Hey, Jalen, Adam Huntsucker. I'm uh, new to the beat, so looking forward to working with all of you. So um, I guess, you know, my question is, what's the transition period? What was it like, you know, getting used to a new co coach and her expectations and, and the way she wanted things done around here? Um, everything with her is high intensity. That was the biggest thing, you know. We don't stop moving in practice, so, <laughs> yeah, that the biggest part was just, like, keep going and, you know, not being able to – we don't really take water breaks. We more, like, if you're on the side of the end of the line, you get your water then. So just never stop moving. That was, like, the biggest change in it. Um, this is kind of a question for like Jalen and Hannah. Um, Jalen, you decided to like come back. Mm -hmm. What are like your goals for this season? And Hannah, where are your goals as well? Um, my first goal is one to just stay confident in myself the whole season. Um, I have a decent defensive goal of being um, all defensive team or all SEC for uh, defense, um, and just to win more games. Um, I would say my goal is to step into a bigger role than what I'm used to because last year I really got to take a back seat and kind of watch like Nalissa Smith and Queen Egbo do their thing. So <laughs> this year just stepping into a bigger role and understanding that I'm going to be a bigger part of the team this year. Uh, Jalen, being one of the fifth-year players on this team, how have you taken on that, that leadership role so far this season? Um, I'm not much of a, a verbal person, so my leadership role will be, you know, showing everybody, like, everything is supposed to be done with hard work, you know. You don't never take a slack off, you know. Um, I don't say too much, but, like, if something goes on, I will say something. 
You know, when you had a lot of folks come out the other night, you had folks come out from, you know, when Coach was introduced back in April. Uh, uh, having been around this program for a while, have you noticed the change in excitement and anticipation from, from people, uh, you know, not, not within the program, mm -hmm. uh, within the program, of course, but w without the fans, people on campus, maybe that sort of thing? Um, yeah, it's been a drastic change in, you know, the amount of support that we get now from the last four years that I've been here, which is, you know, it's pretty exciting knowing that um, – the LSU campus and, you know, the community, um, they all support us now. And I'm playing for Coach Mulkey already. What is our coaching style and really what is it like to play for? Um, she's very intense. She expects the everything you got, you have to give it to her. Um, even if you think it's enough, it's not. Just keep, <laughs> keep working hard. Um, she's very high intense, but she's a winner. You know, her having her on your team, you're going to win. Just to follow up, off the court, what is she like? Um, a lot of people don't really know, but she's pretty funny. Um, she's... <laughs> Sweet. She doesn't want everybody to know that. Like, shh. <laughs> it's my but competitive advantage. Shh. She's great. She's great. Any more questions for Jalen or Hannah, guys? All right, thank you. Please y'all get ready for practice. Thank you, all guys. Right. Thank you. Good job. All right, Coach. All right, baby. What are the what are the goals in an exhibition game? What, what are the things you're looking for? I assume you want to get everyone on the court, uh, but aside from that, what, what are you particularly looking for? Well, like with anything, it's to win. Uh, I'm not going to kid you. I don't want to ever lose, so uh, I'm going to play to win, but it doesn't really count other than um, competitors play to win. But looking at a lot of different things, I don't even know today who I'm going to start, and the people I start may not even be the people that end up starting when we do officially kick this thing off with real games, looking at combinations. Honestly, um, some of them look great in practice. Some look great in drills. The lights come on. Let's see what happens. Uh, conditioning, I expect it to be poor. Always is until you get them going good. Um, just to see retention, how much they can retain and, and carry it over from practice into a game. Um, but... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm as excited as a lot of people just to see what I really have out there on the floor with the understanding that um, this game doesn't count. But it really does count in my mind because it just tells me a little bit more about each of them. Kim, would you uh, consider this uh, transition to be is – it, is it going quickly? Is it going about the rate you thought? And will it get into the season before you really have a feel – for you know who you can depend on and who's in the rotation oh i think you're going to have to go into the season you're going to have to you know be in tight games uh, you know our very first tight game who am i who am i really looking at i don't know because i know what i see in practice but i know they beat the heck out of each other in practice um, so i will learn a lot during the games about kids some some decisions I make will be the correct ones. Some of them may not be the correct ones. But uh, what I do know going in is we're going to play hard. I cannot imagine them going on that floor and, and, and they not give me all they have. They've done that from the time we started. And that, that tells you they're buying into to what we're trying to do. Do I expect it to be a, a finished product? By, by no means. We may not be a finished product all year. This is the first year putting in a system. Uh, we sit in staff meetings, and I'll go, God, I really need to put that in before that. But they're not ready for that. You can't throw a lot at um, people until you grasp what you put in already because um, then you'll become, you know, a master at nothing. So we've got to master the basics and um, little by little put in different things. Hey Kim, um, off the court at least. I mean, you were you were at Baylor for a long time, so 
I'm sure that transition and getting settled in this community, that's so, something new. But do, do you feel settled and how have you kind of been able to, what's been the, I guess, what's been the toughest challenge of, you know, coming here and, you know, getting, getting situated? You know, it hasn't been a challenge for me. And I really attribute that this is home. I, I, I know everybody. Uh, I'm, I'm telling some of our administrators who people are because they are not from here. Um, it's, it's home. LSU is not where I went to school, but yet I grew up 40 minutes down the road. And um, I have not had any trouble adjusting to being back. Uh, the hard part for me is I want everything done yesterday, and that includes moving in my new house. That includes uh, recruiting. That includes uh, learning the plays. Uh, so patience will really be uh, front and center of my world right now and not to get frustrated. Um, and just show, show patience. Show them that you believe in them. Uh, I've only done this twice in my life. And so... Uh, starting over can be difficult. Obviously, it's going to be extremely difficult. But because I'm at a place where I'm extremely comfortable, and I think everybody that I work for understands where the program is, where we're trying to take it, and that doesn't happen overnight. We were fortunate at Baylor to win the whole thing in five years. Now, where do you ever find a blueprint or a book that tells you this is how you do it in five years? It's unheard of. But if you see progress, then you know you're heading in the right direction. Will it ever be quick enough for me? No, it won't ever be quick enough for me, but I'll keep perspective. I think um, it's kind of like a fine wine. You get better with age. I think wisdom comes with age. Kim, I'm not suggesting that you play favorites, but you were a point guard, and I'm wondering if you get really close to your point guards on your team, and, and uh, the second part of the question would be, how much of yourself do you see in Kayla Pointer? Well, you, you don't have favorites. What you do, it's funny you ask that, because I, as I teach on the floor, I'll stop in the middle of practice and I'll say, anybody know who my favorite is out here? And they all look at each other. I don't have a favorite. I guess the favorite all-time player I've ever coached was my daughter, for obvious reasons, but it didn't get her any more minutes. Um, I certainly have those who I understand uh, and, and, and kind of laugh at, and then I have those who challenge me to get the most out of them. I play to win. To answer the point guard, the point guard question, the point guard has to be an extension of me on that floor. They have to be able to take all the credit and all the blame. They have to know every position on that floor, what those guys' responsibilities are. They have to start the, the, the pass to make the first entry pass to get, get us going. They've got to call the correct defense. They have to be the coach on the floor. And so I have to, at times, be hardest on them, but I also know they get most of the credit. It's like a quarterback in football. The receiver never gets – credited for an interception, right? Regardless if he tips it or somebody tips it, it always goes back to the quarterback when you look at the stat sheet. And so I tell them, there's a lot, a lot of credit coming your way. But you got to remember, you have to take the burden of blame sometimes just to help your teammate. And Kayla Pointer has been nothing but a trooper. She has been a warrior for me since I got here. Uh, you remember that that was her Aunt Nikki. How difficult is that to want to stay? And she did. And uh, she's allowed me to challenge her. She's allowed me to uh, praise her. Uh, she's picked to be an all-conference player this year, and um, we need her to have a great year. Oh, they're all better than me. I, I was just – I was smart, man. I played with some of the greatest to ever play this game. And um, – Kids nowadays, they're all bigger, faster, stronger. They have resources that we didn't have back in the day. They have NLI opportunities. They get money on top of their scholarships now. They're living the best times of their life in college. Kim, you said how you've only done this a couple of times. Have you been, leading up to this season, have you been in touch with some emotions and feelings that maybe you didn't experience? You know, I'm sure every year you're excited for every season, but that you hadn't felt maybe since you started at Baylor or maybe even started at, play as a player at La Tech? No, not really. I think um, you, you get a little anxious, but I don't, I don't, 
I want to have that anxiousness. If, if I go into a game and I don't have butterflies in my stomach, then I need to get out. I need to get out. You know, and that's the way I was as a player is that, wow, until that thing's tipped off, man, I'm ready to go. Uh, certainly, guys, I'm a realist. There are going to be so many down times. Do you think just me coming here, I'm going to wave this magic wand and we're going to win all these games? It's not going to happen. But I know what I'm going to look for on that floor, and I know every day it's going to be better and better and better in some capacity. Uh, but I'm excited that um, the community's excited. I'm excited that when we host events uh, like we've hosted, that it's packed and that there's a lot of people here. I'm excited that that we our goal is to sell 5,000 season tickets, and I think we're you know approaching that 4,400, and we haven't even made a big push for that yet. That's exciting. Um, uh, you know, if you're not excited, then why do it? Now, can I do at 59 what I did 21 years ago, to be honest with you? I told you, I'm a lot wiser. You think I'm going to go out there and take a charge on these kids? Back in the day, my very first job, I was out there taking charges. I'm not stupid, uh, but I'm out there instructing. And if I can't instruct and I can't be intense and I can't be, um, you know, funny and, and all those things, then I'm not reaching young people I need to get out. But right now, we're having the time of our life. And um, thank God for my coaches. They came with me. I don't have to sit down in staff meetings and teach them how I want things done. I sit down and tell them what I want done, and they know how to go teach it. And we just got to keep working. We got to keep recruiting. We got to keep selling this program, and uh, and we will. Uh, yeah, Coach, you've constantly preached to fans that this process is going to take some time. What would you consider a success in this first season? Well, things that the fans won't. I'm going to celebrate ten wins. Do you know why? Because they only won nine last year, and we're going to celebrate it like crazy. And then I'm going to count up how many games we have to win to not have a losing season, and we're going to celebrate that. And then I'm going to celebrate if did we move up the NCAA charts and field goal percentage defense? Are we guarding people better? I'm going to celebrate shooting the ball from the perimeter. Little things that in order for us to get better, we have to do. Um, most people will judge you by how many you win. Most people will judge you, um, you know, like that. You can't, you can't do that. You can't put that on this team yet. It's still a learning process for them on how I want things done. They played matchup zone a lot uh, and were very good and kept them in games and won some games. I, I don't teach matchup zones. Um, I, I, I may go into the season, man, I'm hard-nosed man-to-man, and I get out there and bang, all of a sudden we just can't play it. Well, I've got to, I got to adjust. So I've got to teach some kind of zone in practice right now in case I have to do it. I'll give the greatest example, and we, I tease the girls all the time, guys. We play LSU in 2005, and they beat us in the regular season. We go to the national championship semifinal game, and we're down 15, 17. I don't remember what it was at half, and um, we're getting embarrassed on national television. So I make an adjustment, and we go to a 3-2 zone. I have never in my life embraced – a zone. Ironically, for 30 minutes in the practice the day before, I just thought ahead, what if? And I made that adjustment. We got back in the game and we end up winning by five or so. So I am preparing for a lot of scenarios that could happen. But I'm also trying to set a foundation of what I want this program to look like as we continue to recruit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just wanted to get um, get your thoughts on the news about um, Gary Blair, uh, somebody that obviously coached you and you you coached against for a long, long time. That sucker, he gets to go enjoy retirement while the rest of us stress, right? Gary Blair got his start at Louisiana Tech, for those of you who don't know. I was a freshman, and uh, he, he was hired by Sanja Hogue and Leon Barmore from South Oak Cliff High School. And guess who he brought with him? You ever heard of a guy named Dennis Rodman? Well, his older sister taught him everything he knows. Her name was Deborah Rodman. And so I got to play with Deborah Rodman. So Gary was at Louisiana Tech the entire time I was a player. And then he took the Stephen F. Austin job. And 
after I graduated that next year, and that's when there was a change in Sanja Hogue retiring, Leon Balmer taking over, and then I got kind of talked into going to help Coach Balmer. Um, so Gary Blair, um, I could tell some of the funniest stories, but I guess you could say that I knew him when he was first getting started as an assistant. I coached against him. Uh, when I was at uh, Baylor, and uh, we had some classic matchups. Um, one of the things that I will always remember about Gary is the very first NCAA tournament that Baylor ever went to my first year. We played him and his Arkansas team in Cameron Indoor Stadium. Of course, he was better than I was, beat us. But then we were in the same conference the Big 12, and we had some, some classic battles. And I still am waiting for that thank you call from him on that first national championship he won because we played each other four times that year. Two regular season in the Big 12, the Big 12 tournament, and then the NCAA thought it would be great for the game to make us play in an Elite Eight again. It was great for the crowd. It was great for the fans, but – uh, he beat me in that game, or his team did, and they went on to win the national championship. Uh, so Gary is um, – he's, he's just Gary. You know, he's, he's a good guy, uh, need more in the business like him. I don't know about staying in it till you're 76 years old. I can't see many people doing that this day and age, but kudos to him that he was able to survive and last that long and stay healthy. And uh, – Go and go enjoy retirement, Coach Blair, and I look forward to to going against him this this season. He's got a very good team. He won the thing last year in the SEC, and I would imagine he'll be fighting for it again this year. Thank you, Coach. Hey guys, good to see y'all. Go Tigers!